Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you just want to go straight to the audio, please click the chapter marker below. Here's the backstory for this video. Back in the late 1990s, I started to work on a set of songs that would take inspiration from the Old Testament and stories there, which I found inspiring. And I started to work on the VST platform on my PC. And a couple of years later, I imported or exported everything over to my new platform at the time, the Nuendo platform, which I still use. And I started to continue the work. So in about 2000, 2001, I got access to a computer uh, which belonged to a friend of mine in Oslo, Norway. And he worked at a multimedia facility and he had access to a lot of sample libraries. So I just took out what I needed or wanted from those libraries and imported it into my my projects working on these songs. So in this song, there's a lot of uncleared samples. So I could never release this commercially, but hopefully I can use this track now to inspire or maybe boost some creativity in terms of uh, recording techniques or arrangement technique techniques, which is the main focus of this video. I have all the stems on my Patreon sites. So if you want to study the drums, bass, pads, synths, etc., in more detail, you can do that there. But for now, let's head over into the door and let's see what this is all about. And here's the project window and there are lots of things going on here. So let's start the track from the beginning and listen all throughout. And I'll break it all down uh, afterwards and we'll go through what's happening and there's a lot to go through. So just sit back, have a cup of uh, tea or coffee or whatever your favorite drink is and uh, relax and enjoy and we'll talk after the, the track has finished. Okay, let's go.
there is some reason to uh, everything going on here and there is a progression that I was very keen about from the start having in this song, in the arrangement. So uh, we're gonna start there and break it down bit by bit. Okay. And I wanted a particular chord progression going throughout the song, at least in the second part of the song. The intro chords are as this, A minor, E minor with a G bass, F major 7, and the E minor with the G bass again. And I alternate a little bit between the G and E in the bass for that intro part, depending on what's going on. And uh, I start off the whole thing with a bit of uh, breathing sound, alternating between the left and right channel with lots of reverb, going for a Darth Vader type of sound. Let's check it out from the beginning. I just thought this sounded cool. I spent a quite amount of time finding the right sound and uh, layer layering it correctly. And we have some ambient sounds here as well. And here come the pad sounds. and the grand piano. So this grand piano part, I've played this by hand. It is one continuous take, but it wasn't the first take. I did many takes before I found something that sounded um, consistent throughout from start to finish. So it's very hard to sort of punch in in small bits and pieces in a sort of emotional uh, yeah, bit like this. So I had to record it from start to finish to be able to get the emotions flowing throughout that piano part. So it took me a while to do it. And of course, everything you see now uh, here in this project window is rendered out as audio. So I don't have any MIDI files. I don't think I ever recorded MIDI files for this part at all, actually. I, rarely record MIDI parts when I'm doing production music. I might do it for a tutorial or uh, something uh, from scratch, but this is something I go through now in hindsight, so I never intended this to be any sort of tutorial, so I don't have MIDI tracks for most parts here. Uh, but that was the intro, and again, you could hear the, the uh, A minor. And some of the off sounding sounds you hear during this intro part is very intentional. I didn't want everything to sound in the same key or having the same smooth transition from chord to chord. I wanted something to break up uh, and add texture. That's very important to me to add texture and I'm not afraid to have uh, 
certain notes uh, crashing totally against uh, the background. I often find that very interesting and it adds up uh, to the tension and bring the, the whole momentum forward. So that's very something I do, especially in music like this, which is not uh, synth pop in a sort of uh, yeah, verse, uh, pre-chorus, chorus structure. This is freestyling and I can do whatever I want. And I want that. Okay, let's continue and see what's going on. And we're going into a part now which has very little in terms of chords, but it has more uh, drums and bass. And there's a lot of drums going on in this track. So let's zoom in on a little bit here and uh, see what's going on. So building up, building up, building up. And you heard that uh, going on in the left and right channel. This is of course something I've done on purpose. Let's see if we can zoom in on that one as well. Where is it? Uh, here it is. Some stutter effects. I can't remember exactly what I used. Uh, as the main source for the stutter, but it's a kind of a, a little drum snippet uh, taken somewhere in the track. And I've just panned it hard left and right to uh, give it sort of a uh, computer glitch sound while I'm transitioning into the, call it verse if you want to, or where the solo instruments come in eventually. <laughs> And let me tell you, all of these uh, vocals you hear here are taken from various um, sample CDs or libraries and cut up, chopped up and messed around with. I, it took ages to get this to work. And uh, you only now see the, uh, the, the layered thing and uh, you don't see all the little vocal chops and edits I've done because I've uh, bounced this out to something that looks uh, much more clean in the project window here. But it was a lot of work. So let's go that from the beginning. And you heard, heard those stutters there. Everything is done on purpose. Uh, so clicks and pops are still remaining. I don't care if, if, if it is. Uh, it, it's hidden in the arrangement. So sometimes I don't go in and micro edit everything to sound smooth in terms of uh, glitching and stuff like that. Sometimes it just adds to the, uh, yeah, again, the tension. So that the, that's the vocal parts, uh, the bass here. Something taken from the trilogy, Spectrosonics trilogy back in the day. I don't have that anymore. I think I used a copy from a friend of mine back then. He had Atmosphere trilogy and uh, what was the last one? Uh, can't remember right now. So I never owned this uh, library back then, but I sure made good use of it. And this is one of the bass sounds from it. And the drums. Uh, 
The kick drum here is interesting. I didn't want to go for a Lin drum type or uh, TR-707, etc. I wanted a more muted but hard kicking bass because I wanted to emphasize more on the bass itself than the kick drum in this track. And I think that hard hitting uh, bass from the Spectrasonics trilogy and this hard hitting bass uh, kick drum here blended uh, very well together. So I kept that throughout and I've tried occasionally throughout the years to uh, to change out that kick but i never get the same feeling listening to it so i've i've kept on to this kick uh, throughout the years a couple of snare drums going some breaks so it's a lot of things going on in this um, drum track And coming up towards the solo instruments here. And this was the biggest uh, edit job of all. And the time spent editing these two solo instruments in this track, well, it was a lot of hours spent on this. I had sample libraries I just found two different sounds. Uh, the, the melodic phrasing was different than you hear now. And I, ju I just sampled up small bits, stretched it out, chopped it up again, resampled, layering, etc., etc., to to have this that you're hearing now. And um, yeah, it was a lot of time doing these edits. So let's check it out. I can still hear where I've pitched the original sample up or down. You can hear that artifact type of sound to the to the timbre. And um, yeah, it's it's really fun. So that marks the end of that and going into a, um, a sort of bridge uh, section. But we're not through here yet. Uh, let me mute those uh, solo instruments and see what's going on uh, behind it. Yeah, here you can hear, see the atmosphere sound. So that is also from the Spectrosonic Atmosphere Library at the time. I have some uh, Z3TA Plus here. I have some absinthe, and want to remember that. Uh, and what else? SW Performer was a um, plugin synth at the time. I don't have any of these uh, plugins anymore. I think some of them were on that uh, computer I used in Oslo, two hours from where I live. I had a friend, he's dead now, by the way, very sad story. But I had a friend living there, and he had uh, he worked in this studio and they had a lot of cool software. He actually mastered uh, some of the albums I were working on at the time and he had those instruments going. So I spent some time there recording a lot of stuff and uh, some, of the, some of it ended up on this track here. I also have a sample here which is totally uh, off in terms of getting clearance. BT, Brian Transor, the, the trans king of the 90s. I listen to him a lot. I still listen to him occasionally. Great uh, musician. Lots and lots of uh, cool edits in his music as well. And he, I think he released stems from one of, one of his songs at one time. Yeah, I can't remember exactly what track, but he had some samples on there, which I took into this song. So this is totally, again, off the charts in terms of uh, getting clearance, but there's... They sound cool. Let's have a listen.
So that sounds cool in my opinion. So I've, I'm just keeping it in here and uh, never releasing this track commercially. I'll never make any money of it, but it's, it's a cool exercise and hopefully you can get some ideas and inspiration out of watching this, this video. That's basically my goal with this now. Chord progression now is basically like before, just some small adjustments. The A minor, and now we're going down to an E minor. And the bass, um, I hear I'm doing some sort of uh, velocity dynamics going on here. I'm pretty sure I played this bass by hand back in the day. It sounds kind of quantized now. I'm, I, I actually can't remember exactly what I did, but I did uh, use the velocity on the keys. So some hits are hard, some are soft, and that just adds to the, to the whole dynamics of the thing, I guess. So uh, I like it. I heard that little th swing there. Was that the um, absent, I guess? It was going into the bridge, so that's next. So going into the bridge, we're gonna keep the chord structure for a while uh, still. Just doing the same pads as we started the track. Lots of phasers going on here. Going into a gated pad here, which was done in MIDI, uh, if I uh, recall correctly. The grand here, as you can hear. Syncopated. And now we're going into the second part of the bridge. I'm going to change the, the, the chord uh, structure uh, slightly here. Now we're going to go from um, the E minor to a G and to a D and to an A. And that little flute type of sound you heard, uh, let's uh, pick that out here. And that was actually done on a Pro 53 plugin, one of the first third party uh, VST plugins from Native Instruments back in, the, back in the day. Do you remember that one? Let's check it out. And I wanted that uh, uh, thrill and um, sound to mimic a sort of uh, 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 flute from the Middle Ages, and uh, I thought it just sounded cool in the arrangement to have something like uh, something like that going at that point. And there's some more coming uh, coming in here. We have some acoustic guitar also coming in on that second part of the bridge. Mm -hmm. 
not a real guitar, uh, sort of. It was a virtual guitarist, again, from... Uh, did Steinberg release it? I can't remember actually, but it was very popular at the time, one of the first sort of um, chord-driven automatic instruments for the VST platform. I used it a lot back then, and in itself, it kind of sounds kind of robotic and sterile, but again, in the arrangement, it kind of works. And uh, I would probably replace this with a real strumming guitarist if I were to release this commercially, but again, I'm not, so uh, let's just keep it in there. And the last thing uh, uh, which I've muted now is my vocals during this part. And again, these are made up of uh, four different harmonies, uh, very band pass filtered and stemmed together and mixed and uh, pre-mixed and uh, adjusted before importing it into this uh, arrangement here. I think I have something going on it uh, already. Yeah, I have a lot of, um, I have some, um, Compressor going from my SSL channel here. I have some harmonizing from the Eventide, some more dancing, some filter, and some imaging. So there's a lot of things going on on these vocals. So let's check them out. And here I turn the drums over to something completely different in terms of um, sound and timbre. And this is a uh, break from a, uh, again, BT sample libraries called, uh, what was it called? Uh, BT's break beats or whatever. I can't, I can't remember. This is, remember this is almost uh, 25 years ago. So I can't remember, but we can listen to it. I felt this just added a nice uh, momentum at this point in the song track, so I just uh, stuck with it. And now we're going into the last transition before the, the final, call it choruses, kicks in. And this is where things start to be epic and uh, more powerful. And uh, let's check out the transition first. Again, just lots of layering, chopping up samples, just making it sound like a, um, yeah, like a epic break really. We can solo it. <laughs> and that's the transition into the final choruses. So um, let's check those out. For the last choruses, I had some specifics I wanted to implement. I wanted to uh, change the chord sequences, the chord progressions, in a way that I could still use my, um, my vocalists from the beginning, the flute sounds and the pipe sounds, all those melodies, without changing those. But I wanted to change the chords. And how do we do that? Well, we have some clever ways of doing it. So if you remember back, So that sequence, that progression starts with the A minor. So now when we go into the first chorus after this epic break, I still do the A minor, but then I do the C chord, and a D chord, and an F chord. 
And that is actually the same chord progression as um, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So I wanted to use that for a couple of times, but then I wanted to change it up again, uh, but still uh, start on the A minor and still having room for those solo instruments. So I use another chord sequence a little later. A minor, B minor, C, and D before going back to A minor again. So let's check out those last choruses. So let's put on those um, soloists from uh, before. And the new chord sequence. And in terms of sound, I uh, do it a little bit differently on the bass uh, now. I play it a little bit more. I add another part. acoustic guitar again and I also added some more snares in the drum department I added a more uh, 80s reverb snare to really add to the epicness of the whole thing And we take it down to just a couple of uh, sounds, bass sound, acoustic guitar, and the absinthe lead sound. And then the bass is gone. And we're close to the eight minute marker and I just end everything abruptly.
No reverb tail or anything, just cut it off. Like the surgeon said, cut that out. And that's my track Elisha, a journey from A to Z. I've tried to um, add textures, uh, dramatic sequences, ups, downs, low points, high points, etc. To, to provide a journey where your head might start to spin and as always the best brains spin the most. Well, I hope you liked this breakdown. It was fun for me to revisit something that I just left off 25 years ago and hopefully it can bring some inspiration and creativity to you watching as well. I'm Espencroft, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers!